Screen Time Stories is presented by Pinwheel. Pinwheel gives kids and teens a smartphone experience that actually supports healthy development. I'm Julie, and as a parent, I know that embracing technology today is a must. Our kids will log on whether we like it or not. So let's lean into the challenges and joys of parenting with tech by learning from the latest research and experts in the field. This is Screen Time Stories, parenting techniques for raising tech natives. Let's figure this out together. Hey, Hillary. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hillary is a homeschooling mom down in Florida who runs a variety of parenting resources, including classes and a coaching program. When it comes to homeschooling, she as a parent gets to figure out which methods work best. For some people, that means technology supports most of their day. But for Hillary and her family, they use tech in a conscious way, limiting it to the areas that Hillary knows are her weak points. I think there's a lot of opportunity to get creative with your unique family when it comes to homeschooling, finding that perfect balance to support holistic growth in our kids. If you're looking to toy around with some new devices and platforms, think outside the box. Limitless creativity is the beauty of homeschooling, right? I love the idea of giving everyone a fitness tracker, like a Fitbit. It'll help kids feel excited about their physical education. You can search for a credible podcast episode on the unit you're covering to help drive the topic home. A device like an Amazon Echo can provide quick answers about the weather and the date. It can set a timer and play classical music in the background. Also, studies show that audiobooks are just as beneficial as hardcovers, especially for kids that struggle with extra challenges like dyslexia. Needless to say, tablets and laptops can offer a ton of benefits. Try to figure out the most impactful ways you can use this to support your school day, like creating an online field trip to an intriguing spot on the other side of the world. If your community doesn't offer an in-person class that interests your kid, chances are, It's online. I know every county is different, but my library offers a ridiculous amount of free classes through partnerships. It's awesome. If you do use a tablet or laptop for homeschooling, try really hard to budget for a school only device that doesn't contain any mindless games or social media to help your child stay in the right mindset. So Hillary, you're homeschooling your 11 year old son, managing your business, being a wife and a whole lot more. How's all this going for you? Oh, you know, it's like this morning I was, you know, doing my business on the toilet and my four year old comes and screams, mommy, mommy, the dog pooped. Oh. And I was like, okay. I mean, it's always something happens when I try to have my alone time in the bathroom, right? <laughs> So that or when you're trying to sleep. Yes. And so I come running. I'm like, okay, where do you poop? And he's like, right there. And I'm like, where? I couldn't see it. He's like, right there under your exercise ball. (laughs) I was like, oh, great. He had thrown, he was throwing the ball and it landed in the poop. And so I was like, you know, that's parenting. (laughs) (laughs) You never know what the day is going to start out like. And yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah. Sometimes I wake up to the poop. It's like, like I wake up and the cat has already vomited while I was sleeping. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes you have like multiple things like the dog barfed and pooped and then the child, <laughs> I don't know, diarrhea and like everything, you know, it's just so messy. <laughs> messy. <Yeah. laughs> we have to embrace the mess. I think it's Absolutely. just part of parenting and parenting children and parenting animals. Um, so I want to talk to you about homeschooling today because I think it's fascinating. I used to homeschool and I know you did too, okay. uh-huh. um, but it's probably changed so much since I was a homeschooler. I mean, for me, it was 20 years ago. Tell me about how you got into homeschooling in the first place. So, um, you know, I had never really seen myself to be a homeschool mom, but even though my, my experiences as a homeschool, I was homeschooled when I was younger up until high school and I had an okay experience. I'd say the only thing 
I didn't like was that it was pretty lonely. My, my siblings were a lot older than I was. And so I was kind of the last one left. And, um, it, it was, it was a bit isolating, but I think I'm, I'm grateful for the experience. I feel like my entrepreneurial mindset is mostly because of that a lot for a lot of reasons, but, um, I definitely never saw myself homeschooling my kids just because it was, I don't know. I was never, it was never something I wanted to do. I didn't desire that, but, um, a few things happened kind of around the same time I went to this gala, um, and the speaker there was talking about, um, suicide in kids and, how, and I don't know the numbers. I I can't remember. It was a very long time ago, but basically he was saying, you know, you would think that suicide is because of this, this, and this, but recently statistics are saying it's because of this. The speaker was saying basically like kids who are under this extreme pressure to be perfect, whether that's from social media or whether that's from their parents or their teachers to get good grades, whether that's from the society that we live in, that's just like this pull to perfection for them. And so that really hit home with me. And my son was attending a private school at the time. And um, he started having panic attacks when he would get home because he needed to finish all of his homework and was just really stressed. And, and I started to just see like this, like he, he felt like he needed to be perfect. And even though we'd always told him like, I don't care what grade you get, like, just do your best, whatever is your best. That's good enough. And, um, but he's just a very, he's very much like me. Like, I just really like to do the best I can, I can do. My daughter, I dropped her off at school three minutes early. And because that wasn't early enough, I could just see the anxiety, like yeah. There was construction on the road and she's like, oh man, I'm only going to have three minutes to get in the door and yeah, backpack up. So I get it. Yeah. My son reacted the same way. He's like, mom, I'm going to be late. And my teacher is going to, you know, like in this. And so I was like, I didn't like those things that were happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but that wasn't, that wasn't the only reason it was, um, a myriad of things. Half the kids in his class had phones at that point. And I just felt like I didn't have any, any say in what his environment was and what he was, mm-hmm. and what he was experiencing. I think that there was, I sent him to school from kindergarten. He went to first grade in, in Germany. We were living there, had an amazing experience there. It was very multicultural. It was, um, I wouldn't trade it. Like there's things he's experienced in school that have been fantastic and it has really shaped him very well. Um, but then, you know, when fourth grade rolled around, things just started to shift and kids are having phones. And I just, I don't know, it was kind of just in my heart. I was, it was not necessarily something, a decision out of fear. And um, like, I don't think we should make decisions based off of fear, but it was more of a, I want him to experience this. And this is not that this is not what I'm wanting him to experience in in his schooling and in his learning. Um, And then COVID hit and it was like, oh, okay. And so then we experienced like the, the learning at home thing for a few weeks. And I was like, oh, there's no way I'm going to homeschool. Like this is terrible. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like pulled me back from wanting to homeschool And we were living in a tiny home at the time in the middle of the mountain or like not the middle of the mountains, but like in a little mountain town. So we had like, we were under like two feet of snow, isolated. Uh, We couldn't go outside. Like it was just, it was very depressing. And um, I, I just kind of backed away from that for a little while. But then as time went on, I just was reminded, okay, like I, I need to revisit this homeschooling thing. Mm -hmm. And um that's when um, just like things at school were beginning to get worse. My son was, um, he had a few experiences that were not what um, I would like for him just with other kids and how they were treating him. And so it was just a myriad of things. And we were also deciding to, uh, thinking about moving. Mm -hmm. And um, 
I knew that if I did homeschool, I didn't want to be cooped up in winter, you know, like trying to homeschool when you can't go outside. Mm -hmm. And so that was a huge part of us moving to Florida. So you can be outside all year round. And um, there's a huge homeschool community here, which has been an added bonus for us because so many moms homeschool here and there's so many activities like um, they, they have like uh, survivalist classes that he could go to. There's, there's schools that have like part-time. So he could do an entrepreneurial class. He could do a gardening class. He could do um, different things like that. And um, yeah, you can like homeschooling has changed so much from when I was homeschooled to now that you can just like there's no, there's not isolation. And that's what I wanted to make sure with him is that he okay. wasn't, he wasn't isolated because he's yeah. so social and he loves people. And, and I knew that he needed that. So. Yeah. I understand exactly where you're coming from because when I was homeschooled, I had maybe a once a month meetup at yeah. the roller skating rink <laughs> and it was so infrequent. I didn't know any of the kids. I, you know, felt really awkward every time I saw them. I did not want to make an effort to yeah. make friends with somebody that I wouldn't see again. Right. For, you know, another four or five weeks. Um, so I, I think that's awesome that that is such a huge change for kids to be able to have that sense of friendship and community while they're doing their thing. Do you feel like your homeschool group of moms is, you know, and not, not necessarily your group that you're formally a part of, but just your community in general. Um, do you think that is an anomaly or are there lots of pockets of these around the U S these, you know, really supportive, a lot of people are doing homeschooling type groups. Oh, I know there's, there's money everywhere. You can, you can, you just have to, Facebook is actually a great place to find those groups. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can just, yeah, look up local homeschooling groups. Um, and that, that's how I found the one that I went to. It's not necessarily a group. It's like a, just different places. Like they basically set up activities like field trips together and, um, I mean, I learned about so much, like everything that you can do here that I would have never thought you could. And like that survivalist class for him, like he loved that. It was like learning how to set a snare and learning how to build a fire and how to filter water. And it was just like right up his alley. And and yeah. I I wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to do those kinds of things if he was in school. That's very true. I don't think they offer that. <laughs> Oh, tell me more. Tell me what a normal day looks like for you guys, because this is this is fascinating having the survivalist class. But what else? What else do you have going on on a daily basis? And like, what is your overall year look like? Do you have summer breaks? Do you school all <laughs> the way through? Do you go from eight to three p.m. Like, how yeah. rich are you? I, I just want to know all the things. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So I still, nothing is normal about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're very, my husband and I, we're, we're finally getting older. Like we're finally feel like adults in that we're like, okay, we actually need to have a budget. Um, we've avoided that. I hate that word budget, you know, like it's <laughs> yes. the worst word ever, but like, okay, this year we're going to have a budget and we're going to have a schedule. And then but then I realized like when we do all those things, I get really stressed out. And I don't know if that's like my personality or what, but I'm like, I'm just like, it, it just, it just, when I have like these regulations and maybe that's cause I was homeschooled, <laughs> I was kind of on like a free schedule, but I just don't like being put in a box of like, this is what I have to do. But sometimes those things are helpful. So I'm trying to balance that like, okay, we need a schedule for the day. So we don't just wander and like not get anything done, but also like, let's have some wiggle room in there. If, you know, a friend calls and says, Hey, you guys want to go to the museum with us or whatever. So we've tried to, to kind of be flexible, but also have, have a schedule. So last year it was very, you know, we started out really good on a high note of like the schedule and everything. And then like slowly as the year went by, we're just like more and more got looser and looser. And so this year I was like, should I do 
unschooling because that's more like, cause my son is very self-motivated. Like he just loves to learn. And so I don't really have to hover over him to, to be like, do this, do this and, and make sure you're, you know, I, I never grade him. So we kind of do a mixture. Like I, I make sure he's understanding it. And then we go back and we look at what the mistakes that he made, but I don't give him like a final grade of like, Oh, you got these wrong. So that's a 80%. Um, so we, are we you saying that you just teach until the subject is learned. So in other words, if he were in school, he would be getting everything right. But it's just a matter of, you know, instead of teaching 25 kids, you have one kid and you have that ability to go back in and look at all the mistakes and say, well, you know, what did you not understand about this? Let's try this again. Right. So yeah, in the moment when he got it wrong, we talk about it and we go over it instead of it, you know, him handing in a paper, it being the next day and he gets it back and, and, you know, teachers can't go over every single problem that every child got wrong. So there's like this, a little bit more interaction. Um, But I mean, back to your question about what our day looks like, we wake up, we have breakfast um, and my husband and I, we exercise and then my son does his, well, the kids play together while we do that. And then my son does his chores. So he has daily chores. We have animals. So he takes care of the animals and he um, does the dishwasher, you know, like uh, that are chores that are appropriate to his age. Because I, I think that's like kind of building his life skills and, and helping him to become responsible. And like he, I do his laundry, but like he hangs it up and he folds it. And so I'm trying to like little by little kind of give him little things that he can start learning. I think that's part of school too. It's just like learning how to, to live your life and to be organized and to be healthy and to do healthy. He does exercises in the morning. So I'm, I'm not like, I'm not like really firm so that like he, he's just exhausted or anything, but I am, I have these expectations of him. He does his chores and then I, we go over what it's hard to get in the mindset. We, we haven't even started yet. So I'm like, what are we going to do this year? Cause last year was different this year. We're going to start, we'll go over what his, th- his learning is for the day. And then he'll just sort of accomplish it on his own time. Um, he can do whatever subject he wants to first. He can, so there's like, I want to have freedom within that Mm -hmm. so that he's not so, he's just such a free spirit too. And so I don't want to hinder that. And I want him to be learning things in a way that are, that means something to him. He loves to read. So we try and do like less textbook and more like biography reading. Mm -hmm. Uh, He loves to codes like so he does that's where we bring tech into it he does coding um there's an online class my husband's a coder so my husband helps teach him that um he does his math online and because that's just something that I can't <laughs> same what software do you use for that um Khan Academy okay yeah when we started homeschooling last year, I was like, if we're going to homeschool, like you have to like to my husband, I was like, you have to help me because I work and you work and we're just going to have to like tag team this. And we did until my husband's job shifted and cause he works from home. Um, but his job shifted so that he has to be on meetings almost all day. Mm-hmm. And so I had to kind of take over at that point, but he still does. He'll do chemistry with my son and he does math and coding mm-hmm. and I sort of tackle the rest. A lot of people want to get into homeschooling, but they are just scared to take that leap. Um, or it feels like it's too much to do yeah. on top of working. So can you tell me a little bit more about how you were able to make homeschooling work with your job? Yeah, it's, um, it's been an, a, an adjustment to get a rhythm. Um, when I'm home, sometimes I'll go to the coffee shop just because I can't concentrate when I'm at home. Mm-hmm. But when I'm at home, 
I'll be interrupted a few times just with my son with questions and that's okay. And I've had to learn that that is okay. (laughs) And that like, I need to just, um, I need to learn how to kind of lower my expectations for what I can accomplish in a day. So there is that sacrifice. Like I can't perform the same way I would if my son wasn't homeschooling. And that's just is the way that it is. The thing that I'm taking away from a lot of what you're saying is that you're in figuring it out mode. (laughs) I feel like that's where we're all at. Like everything in my life is figure it out mode, you know, work, schooling, parenting. It's, I I feel like I'm just constantly like, well, that didn't work. (laughs) I'm going to do it different this time. And so you're kind of in the same boat in that sense, but just doing things slightly different than the average bear. So every day might look a little different. Every year looks a little different. Um, yeah, yeah, just yeah, happiness. And like you said, it's trying to make choices not based on fear. Yeah. So I run a parenting blog and I also cover different topics like marriage and um, lifestyle recipes that, but it's mostly parenting and I write a lot about it, but I also do, um, parenting classes here in, in town. And it's kind of like a group, um, class that we'll do that kind of the meat behind my content is connecting with your kids Mm -hmm. and having a relationship with them so that they want to come to you with everything instead of, you know, want to hide from you. It's really good um, content, really well researched, and um, I, it's hard hitting. It's the kind of thing because I, I just wanted to clarify because some mom blogs are not great. <laughs> some of them are like, "Oh, we made popsicles today. <laughs> Look how cute they are," <laughs> which is yeah. so cute. Um, but I think that you bring a certain sense of research and empowerment to the table. I really enjoy what you put out there and the way that you're able to aggregate information and put it together in something that's really um, condensed and easy to read and hard hitting. It's perfect for busy parents. (laughs) I go deeper because I think we have to as parenting, we, we have to ask those hard questions to ourselves. Like, what can I do differently to help my child? Yeah, it's it's a it's a mixture of self reflection, and then just grace because nobody's perfect. And and parenting from a place of humility, like if you do screw up, like say I'm sorry. You know, hey, I'm sorry I said that. Can we try again? So tell me, what is I'm going to ask you the positive and negative. What is the best thing from your perspective that you've seen with homeschooling? Um. I love that my son isn't stressed out anymore um, at 11 years old. (laughs) It is so inspiring to watch him become this young man that is respectful, that is kind, that is compassionate. I, I feel like I would be missing out on so much if he were in school. And maybe that's selfish a little bit, but he also... I should say like he wanted to homeschool. It was, it was never like me forcing him. It was a decision that we both made together. Um, and I think that's important. And I know that's not everybody's case. You know, maybe you have to homeschool, but your child doesn't want you to, doesn't want to be homeschooled. And I know that there's just so many different situations, but that being said, it's (laughs) the negative part (laughs) is also Like there are days when we are just all off or one of us is off and we're just irritable and we just don't want to talk and we don't want to, like we're around each other too much. And we just like, it's just like hard, you know? And so there are those days and it's not perfect. It can get messy. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's funny though. I, I know you're trying to round it out by saying what's hard about homeschooling, but I feel like all of us have our off days where we wake up. Sometimes I'm just irritable or my brain just doesn't seem to be firing for some reason. Is is there anything else about um, 
homeschooling that you would, if somebody is listening right now and they're thinking this might be the new path for me and my kids, um, is there anything that you would warn them about just going into it? You know, and not warn in a sinister way, but warn in yeah. like, now you know to research this piece before you take the plunge. Yeah. Um, I would say really pay attention to how your children learn um, and, the, and then kind of branch out from there. Do your kids like to, to listen more? Do they like to, do they have to listen and see it in order to learn? Do they kind of like, how do they best learn? Is it through play? Is it through, um, I don't know, is it through, through even watching something sometimes like it's good for like, if I don't understand something, we look it up on YouTube and we both watch a video together and why, where to use a comma, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know after all these years. Okay. So we talked about tech a little bit. You said that you guys use Khan Academy and your husband's a coding wizard. So I, I guess we could say, you know, if you have strengths within your family or within your, your tight, you know, inner circle, um, utilize that. Do you have any other tips for us, whether it's relating to homeschooling with tech or simply parenting in general? I never want to go outside of what God's plan is for my kid's life or for my life. And so I think that God has just really given me the strength to get through a lot of things. I have a, um, I have an autoimmune disease. And so that really has changed everything in the last four years because I cannot be, I cannot physically be the same person I used to be. I don't have the energy. I don't have the mind strength. And so I've just had to really rely on God getting me through every day. Wow. That is so powerful. Thank you for sharing that about yourself and how you managed to thrive as a mom in spite of your circumstances. I appreciate your take on parenting and really loved hearing about how you shaped your homeschooling journey with your son. Also, thank you to everyone that listened to this episode. I'll include Hillary's links in the show notes so you can check out her resources. Let me know what challenge with technology your family is facing, and I'll find an expert to help you out. Just email me at truly at pinmail.com. This episode was produced by me, and I'll share another one with you next week. Just hit subscribe to stay in the loop.